the year 1981 was a pretty cool year for movies. Classics like Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Road Warrior, and Clash of the Titans all came out that year and garnered a pretty big fan following in the decades to come. But it wasn't just the year of really cool action and sci-fi films, since it also had a ton of horror movies come out as well. Movies like Scanners, Evil Dead, and My Bloody Valentine were all hitting the scene alongside sequels like Halloween 2 and Friday the 13th Part 2 as well. But that's not all, because 1981 had not one, not two, but three massive horror films surrounding werewolves. One of them, An American Werewolf in London, is still talked about a lot to this very day, and one of the other ones, Wolfen, never really got as much traction as its siblings. However, today's subject is going to be on the other film that I personally really want to go over. This movie was based on a popular novel series and featured some of the most memorable and downright insane transformation scenes in any movie about lichens I've ever seen. It starred Dee Wallace, had both a blend of black comedy and horror, and absolutely delivered on exactly what you'd want out of a monster movie. The Howling is a 1981 film directed by Joe Dante and co-written by John Sayles, someone whose name you may just recognize as the screenwriter from that infamous Jurassic Park 4 script. Now, The Howling is what I consider to be one of the most unsettling films of its time, and that has a lot to do with the film's tone, story progression, and special effects. Realistically, I think this is one of those movies from the 80s that really helped define the horror genre at the time, and while there were a whole lot of other movies that may have technically outpaced it in the box office or legacy department, this film still stands tall as one of the best among its peers in my opinion. If you ever see people talking about the most memorable or scariest horror films of the decade, this one might slip by. It'll definitely be on a lot of lists, but it's kind of still under the radar as far as looking back at the greats from this time period goes, with American Werewolf in London really getting a lot of that attention instead. And while I really like that movie too, Dude, this is the one that I think outdoes it in the thriller department by far. The atmosphere, tone, eerie setting, and plot all come together to make one wildly entertaining monster movie. The story opens up unlike any werewolf movie you've probably ever seen, with a newswoman actually helping the police locate and capture a stalker that has been harassing her for some time. The bad guy's name is Eddie Quist, a serial killer that leaves a yellow smiley face sticker as his calling card. Well, eventually the police gun down Eddie, and all seems to be going well after the author of a book called The Gift sends both Dee Wallace and her husband out to the countryside in order to get away from it all. But that's where the rest of the story kicks in, and I just really think you need to watch the film for yourself in order to get the most enjoyment out of it. I don't want to spoil anything. The howling is too good for me to do that. Now, what makes the monsters in the movie so fun and insanely scary in comparison to their other counterparts at the time is the fact that the transformation sequences that you see the creatures go through on screen are both really over the top while also being extremely realistic. What I mean is the special effects that went into making these werewolves come alive and grow involves a lot of bubbling of the skin and muscles while they're changing into their alternate forms. And it looks like something that doesn't make any logical sense on a scientific level, but the amount of detail and blood that pours from their nails as well as the growing of hair, fangs, and wild eyes just gets absolutely brutal in the film. You can see their jaws grow and their skeletal structures morph into something really crazy. It is really, really fun stuff. Of course, An American Werewolf in London should also be well noted as being an insanely cool movie with that sort of thing too, but The Howling is kind of its own wild beast in comparison. In fact, there are even moments where other special effects like stop motion and animation are used that look eerie and wild alongside the more traditional practical effects suits and masks. And like I said, the transformation scenes themselves are just super awesome to witness in the final product as well. All of it really adds up to a werewolf movie that has a truly great production value while also being extremely unsettling. Now apart from the effects, what makes the movie so memorable has to be the location and interactions with the people of this little colony that the monsters call home. There are several moments in the film where Eddie, one of the main big bads, is just chewing up the scenery and delivering a really just 
dangerous performance that comes off as excellent in my opinion. The best way I can put it is like if Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs was actually a smart ass that you just do not want to be in a conversation with, let alone even in the same room with for that matter. There's one scene in particular and I'm sure other people who have seen the movie before can back me up on, but a moment in the film that actually becomes his downfall is played perfectly from the kind of narcissistic monster that he is. Listen to this part here. Crazy. Oh, I'm much more than that, bright boy. This is definitely a horror movie with a lot of style and class, but wow, the tone and delivery of the bad guys here is just above and beyond a lot of other stuff that was being made at the time. That scene, by the way, the one I mentioned earlier, is probably my favorite part of the movie because you get some other really cool practical effects of the werewolf's face that expose part of his skull from a wound he's just recently got. Man, it's a really awesome film. What makes The Howling even more fun, though, believe it or not, besides all the creepy atmosphere stuff and all the great effects has to be that black comedy style tone and no joke a lot of subtle humor in this movie is hilarious and the way it frames some of its situations is kind of perfect in a really silly and over-the-top sort of way so much so that after this movie came out Joe Dante the director wound up working on a little movie called Gremlins with Steven Spielberg a few years later in fact there's even a fun Easter egg in that movie where Eddie's little smiley face calling card is apparently shown on screen there are times where where the howling really takes off and becomes the nerve-wracking 1980s thriller that I think it's well known for. But man, those jokes that pepper into the narrative are really great too. In fact, the very end of the movie has one of my favorite comedic moments ever, and it's just a fun little twist that I think plays for one hell of a funny meta one-liner. You don't really hear too many people talking about this film anymore, and that's probably because it got way too many sequels that were nowhere near as good as the original. But if you ever want to know why the producers thought that would be a good idea, Idea, check out the 1981 original and see for yourself. Anyways guys, those are all just my own thoughts on The Howling from 1981, one of the scariest werewolf movies ever made, and personally, my favorite if I've got to compare it with everything else. But hey, what are your thoughts on the movie? Have you seen it? And what do you think about the sequels? Personally, I thought The Howling 2 was ex <laughs> extremely funny for a lot of stupid reasons, but uh, hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.